We're now in chapter 8, which is all about dividing fractions. This is lesson 8.1, and we're going to model to divide fractions and whole numbers. We can divide a whole number by a fraction and a fraction by a whole number by modeling with quick drawings, fraction strips, or a number line. And these models can help us act out a problem. If you don't have any fraction strips, you can go to the Joanne School page on Facebook for images of printable fraction strips. When we divide a whole number by a fraction, the quotient will be greater than the dividend. We're finding the number of parts we need to make up each whole. 6 divided by half is equal to 12, and this quotient 12 is greater than the dividend 6. Tala had 6 cookies that she divided by half. How many parts did she have? We can draw 6 circles for the 6 cookies. We can split each of them in half and count how many parts we have. There's 12 parts. That's 12 halves. That's equal to 6 whole cookies. So 6 divided by half is equal to 12. We have 12 parts. When we have a whole number divided by a fraction, such as 2 divided by 1 fourth, we can draw a number line from 0 to 2 and divide it into fourths. We count how many fourths there are. We can see there's 8 of them, so 2 divided by 1 fourth is equal to 8. And we can check it with multiplication. We do 8 times 1 fourth, and if it's equal to 2, we know we did it correctly. We multiply the 8 to the numerator. That's an 8. We use the denominator 4. We have 8 fourths, which simplifies to 2 whole. So yes, it's correct. When we have a whole number divided by a fraction, such as 2 divided by 1 eighth, we can model it with fraction strips. We start with 2 whole fraction strips, 1, 2, and we place enough 1 eighth strips to fit evenly underneath them. We count how many eighths we needed to fit under the 2 whole. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 2 divided by 1 eighth is equal to 16 because we have 16 of them. We can check it with multiplication. 16 times 1 eighth is equal to 16 eighths, which is equal to 2 whole. So yes, it's correct. Remember, we can use multiplication to check our division because they're inverse operations that undo each other. 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5, and 5 times 2 is equal to 10. 10 divided by 1 half is equal to 20, and 20 times 1 half is equal to 10. We have learned that fractions with the same numerator and denominator are equal to one whole, and knowing the number of thirds in one whole will help us find the number of thirds in two whole, three whole, and so on. Three thirds is equal to one whole, so one divided by one third would be three. We have three thirds plus three thirds, that's six thirds, that's equal to two whole, and two whole divided into one third parts is six. See that? Here we have three thirds plus three thirds plus three thirds is equal to nine thirds, that's three whole, and three whole divided into one third parts is nine. We can use fraction strips to divide a fraction by a whole number. Before we were doing a whole number by a fraction, we can do a fraction by a whole number. We have one half divided by two, we're just taking half of something and splitting it into two equal parts. We place a one-half strip under a one-whole strip to show that that's half. And we find two fraction strips that fit exactly under the half so that it's in two parts. Each piece is one-fourth of the whole, so one-half divided by two is equal to one-fourth. And we can check with multiplication. We do one-fourth times two, and if it's equal to one-half, we did it correctly. 
and 1 fourth times 2 is equal to 2 fourths, which simplifies to 1 half, so yes, we did it correctly. When we divide a whole number by a fraction, the quotient will be greater than the dividend. So, when the dividend is a whole number and we're dividing by a fraction, this quotient is going to be greater than that dividend. And when we divide a fraction by a whole number, now our dividend's a fraction, the quotient will be less than the dividend. One eighth is less than one half. Bob bought a half pound bag of shelled pecans. He divided the pecans equally into four bags. On Monday, he fed squirrels with one of the bags. How many pounds of pecans does Bob have left? So we think, first we need to split the half pound bag into four bags to find how much was in each bag. Then we need to subtract the one bag he used to feed the squirrels. Half pound bags split into four separate bags. We do one half strip. We find four fraction pieces that will fit perfectly underneath the one half. We see that one eighth does. So that means there was one eighth pound in each bag. And we need to subtract the bag he used. He used one of them. So we have a half pound minus that one eighth pound that he used to feed the squirrels. And that would be four eighths minus one eighth. Four eighths minus one eighth is three eighths pounds left, or three eighths of a pound left. So what fraction of the original bag does he have left? Not pounds. We want to know, we want to know the fraction of the original bag. So we think he divided the bag into four equal parts and fed one part to the squirrels. So four fourths as one whole minus the one fourth because he split them into four bags and he used one of them to feed the squirrels, would be three-fourths of the bag is left. And do you see how the fraction of the original bag is different than the pounds he had left? Here we have a fraction divided by a whole number. We have two-thirds, so we put a one-whole strip with two one-third strips underneath it. That way we can show that that's two-thirds. We find four fraction strips, because this is a four. We find four fraction strips that fit exactly under the two-thirds. And we see one-sixth size pieces fit. Each piece is one-sixth of this whole strip. We would need six-sixths to make a whole piece. We need four-sixths for the two-thirds. There's one-sixth piece. That means two-thirds divided by four is equal to one-sixth. And if we use a number line where we have two-thirds divided into four equal parts, we can make a number line going from zero to one, and we can show one-third and two-thirds. We find two-thirds and split it into four equal parts, and each part will be one-sixth of from zero to one, that would be a one-sixth jump. Two-thirds divided by four is equal to one-sixth. So just make sure you remember the difference between dividing a whole number by a fraction and a fraction by a whole number. The whole number by the fraction, the quotient will be greater than the dividend, and a fraction by a whole number, the quotient will be less than the dividend. Our next lesson, 8.2, we're going to do word problem solving. We're going to use multiplication and drawing a diagram to do fraction division problems. I hope I'll see you there, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.